It's the annual trip to Beaver Lake, and for some of the best anglers in the country, the weather has transformed this lake, and more rain is coming. It came up three or four feet last night. There was fences in the water, docks underwater. It's changing minute by minute. Who will ride out the storm and figure out the bass? FLW starts now. Welcome everyone to the fifth stop of the 2017 FLW Tour here at Beaver Lake presented by General Tire. I'm Travis Moran alongside longtime content creator for the FLWFishing.com, Rob Newell. Rob, Beaver Lake really uh, is a pattern style lake and there are some key areas that, that really show up year after year. Yeah, you got three main areas on this lake. Uh, Beaver Lake, you got down there by the dam. It's always, for the most part, crystal clear, like fishing in an aquarium down there. You can see everything. Visibility sometimes to 20 feet down there. You have kind of the mid-lake area, that's around Prairie Creek, where they put in every year. Um, any of that stretch from Prairie Creek down three or four miles, up four or five miles, mid lake, we call that Prairie Creek. And then you move up and you've got Horseshoe Bend. And that's really, once you get into Horseshoe Bend, you're talking about being in the White River. Uh, that's uh, up that way, you get a lot more stained and the conditions we have now with all this high water, that area up there at Horseshoe Bend is like plowable mud. And the water conditions really have played a huge role. We've had a lot of rain. This lake is filling up quickly, which the anglers are not used to. This, this lake has filled up more than they've ever seen it in a short amount of time. And it's really created a lot of different techniques that are showing up from a lot of different anglers. I went up there to the, the dirtier water and uh, had 20 pound line and a lizard, a Senko, and just kept flipping to any kind of wood I could find and uh, you know, just waiting for those fish to come up uh, and follow the water up. You can ask most pro anglers, like, tell me the one condition you hate the most. They'd probably either tell you cold fronts in Florida on Florida strain largemouth bass or fast rises in the, in the Ozark regions, in the Table Rocks, Beaver Lake, Lake of the Ozarks. Fast rises like this, when you're talking about lakes that come up eight to 10 feet in three to five days, scatters everything out, just like shakes everything up. And it takes a while for stuff to settle back out. With this continued rain, Beaver Lake has not had any time at all to settle back down. It is just being on the rise, on the rise, on the rise. It, before practice came up three feet. They had a few days of practice, stabilized a little bit, but on the day off that Wednesday, it rose another three or four feet. By the time these guys got back on the water for competition, they didn't even recognize the lake they were on. It went up six or seven feet and it's thrown everybody a curveball. From the start of practice to the start of the tournament, it's like a completely different lake. I've never seen the water level this high here. I think I've been here probably 10 times, 10 or 11 times, and it's just phenomenal to see a lake come up that high. And along with that rising water, you're now seeing a lot of driftwood. It's pulling all that stuff that's been sitting on the shoreline. It's now floating in the lake, and the wind eventually blows it into the corners and creates these little canopies that's really gonna be a ticket for some of these anglers looking for those bigger fish. Yeah, those debris pockets are always a key here when it, when the water comes up. You know, that stuff blows in there, it locks in. If you get some sunshine to warm the tops of that stuff up, and those fish, it just like sucks them in there like a magnet. Under those mats, it's a few degrees warmer. Those fish like to get up in there. Stuff like the shad like to get up there and spawn around that stuff. It's a little bit warmer. Those debris pockets could be really key this week. You just gotta go fishing and adjust on the fly and make those adjustments that you need to to catch them each day, you can't worry about what happens with the weather because that's something that we can't control. And as we take a look at the leaderboard, the first name we see there is Cody Meyer, West Coast guy. He's led it day one and day two. Now, a little tidbit about Beaver Lake, no one has ever led it wire to wire every, every single day. Um, you know, is, is that a curse? Is that something Cody's got to be thinking about in the back of his mind? We're going to find out, but uh, definitely something that uh, has never been done. And uh, But Cody is looking like he's going to make a run at it. I've been here seven or eight times now. I know how tough this place can be. The fish do not replenish here on Beaver Lake. So it's going to be all about new water, uh, fish in the moment, running down the lake, seeing what looks good, fishing it, and hopefully big ones are there and they bite. You gotta take a look at how many tactics are in play. I mean, you look at sight fishing, you're looking at a guy like John Cox. He's up there. You got the shad spawn going on. You got guys like McCombs. I think Brandon McMillan also playing a little bit of that shad spawn back in those debris pockets. I think the conditions are setting up 
There's only 20 of us out here. There probably won't be very many locals with the weather we have coming in. So, you know, all 20 guys will, will be, you know, have free reign of what they want to do. I'm guaranteeing you'll see guys that were in the, you know, in the 10s, 11, 12, somebody's going to come up and some of those guys that are in the top five are going to fall back. Yep. The, the best position might be the second place position. That's where Jason Ray is. No pressure on him. The big bullseye's on Cody. Everyone's saying it's never been done wire to wire. Jason Reyes has no pressure on him. He can really relax, go out there, and just fish his style and adapt to the conditions. The lake's come up a lot over the last few days, and the fish are deciding if they want to move in it. So we're going we're gonna to be flipping around a little bit deeper and a little bit shallower, just trying to keep figuring it out. Every day I have to adapt. So. Hopefully today we'll we'll catch some good ones like yesterday. You ready to get wet? Coming into Beaver Lake, I fish the lake a lot of a lot of times, seven, eight times, and I've seen it high, I've seen it low, but this time we caught it on a big time rise. When you approach a lake that's coming up like this, you, you have to figure out are the fish gonna move all the way up with the water? Or are they gonna stay back? And I personally stayed with the old shoreline because the fish are real slow to adjust to the rising water when it comes up that fast. They wanna be secure. And plus it was a post-spawn deal. So I think the fish were actually retreating the shallows more so than the majority of them heading in. Oh, drag puller. I don't believe Reyes went very far this morning, and uh, he has found a, I believe it's some kind of little saddle uh, right there that he's fishing. It, it, there's a, right out there in front of him, you'll see some bushes, there's like an island, and I think, you know, little, a, a little shoal that sticks up. And I believe he's fishing between that, that shoal mm -hmm. and uh, the, main, the main island over there to his right, there's a little saddle in there. We're good. It's always nice to get a uh, good jump on the day. And now let's take a look at our general tire roadmap to victory. Rob, what are going to be the keys to moving on in this tournament? Number one, Beaver Lake, a conditional lake. You got you to gotta go with a guy that is heads up. He's always looking for windows to open up. The conditions change here all the time. One bite window opens, another bite window closes. Number two is watercolor. Beaver Lake, one end of it, really, really super muddy right now. It's blown out, unfishable up there in the river. Down at the lake, is fishable, but it's very, very high. 10, 11 feet high down there. It's a lot more water on top of the lake. Fish can spread out. The perfect mix that has produced a lot of winds here at Beaver Lake is that dingy, kind of stained color that's in the midsection of the lake. Those fish bite a little bit better in that kind of that perfect greenish stained tinted water. And then there's the three different species of bass we have in the lake. Let's talk about how important it is to have a mixed bag. Yeah, it used to be, we used to come to this lake, spotted bass used to be the game. You wanted a limit of 12 inch spots that weigh like eight pounds, you were doing really good. But lake's gotten a lot healthier in the last seven or eight years. Uh, a lot of smallmouth in here. The largemouth fishery here has come on real good. So the object now, you want a mixed bag, but you want to kick the spots out. You want some smallmouth and some largemouth. Both got to be 15 inches to keep. Obviously a much better choice. If you can blend two or three smallmouth keepers with two or three largemouth keepers, boom, you've got the bonus bag. And Nick Ganey, another one of our tour veterans in the top five that's looking for his first tour win. Nick started the day in fifth. I'm pleased with my performance. This is the best I've done this year. I've had a couple of bombs. And you know, I, I figured out something and stayed with it. You know, what did uh, Einstein say? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So that's me. Very good. And you talk about a guy that's probably glad to get the Beaver Lake monkey off his back. I think He's been out here five or six times, seven times, I'm not exactly sure. But I can tell you this, his best finish here has been 96. So uh, to be in the top five, Nick Ganey's got to be high-fiving. You talk about finally getting revenge. I think he'll keep. Well, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe not. That wasn't even a bite. I just picked up on it and he was moving on. Didn't feel him. Maybe we'll. Oh, yeah, he's 15 and a quarter. Good job. 
There's one down, four to go. A little buck bass, but he'll work. That fish came off that trash, pile of trash. That's my pattern. Dean Alexander is one of our anglers that made the big step up this year to fish the tour and has plenty of fans back in Georgetown, Texas. Yeah, they're anxious, I'm anxious. We're all ready to see how he manages his first cut. This time of the year, I expected kind of the bed fish through the whole tournament and uh, checked the lake level, saw that it you know, was on the rise. They had a real good rain right before we got here and it rose quite a bit and there was very few le uh, fish left on beds that I could see, I could find, so. Yesterday, all this debris right here was not here. There's a little channel, and I could, you know, I could fish the whole entire channel. Fishing a bunch of slop like this, where they're gonna be bedding here in the next couple of weeks when the water stabilizes. Fish from the lower end to the upper end and, and was looking for beds and looking for fish that were coming up, and I tried some, uh, you know, pre-spawn type stuff, couldn't really locate. Cruisers and bedding fish is, is really what I was looking for. That one's a kick guy. <laughs> and there you go, Rob. Dean really is not looking too nervous as of right now. Yeah, you know, it's not a real big one, but trust me, this is gonna go a long way to making sure he makes the cut tomorrow. Travis, we're seeing these guys work the lake in a variety of ways, and uh, now that the rain has let up, could be one of those bite windows opening up right now. Yeah, but you want to keep that rain gear close by because there's plenty more clouds and rain on the horizon as we continue our coverage of the FLW Tour on Beaver Lake presented by General Tire. The FLW Tour is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. BRP Evinrude. Learn more at evinrude.com. You can get more from your oil with Quaker State. Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Ranger Boats. Still building legends, one at a time. And by PowerPole, swift, silent, secure. Shaggy head, get the job done. A half inch short. Broke off my leader. Oh, nice. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to our coverage here on Beaver Lake for the fifth stop on the 2017 FLW Tour presented by General Tire. We've had a little bit of action now with so many different patterns going on in the lake. It'd be some of these guys that took advantage of this uh, shad spawn that's going on right now. And uh, the guy that's moved up, he started the morning in second place, has now moved up to the uh, unofficial leader is Jason Reyes. He caught a limit first thing this oh morning. Oh my gosh, this is exactly how, what you dream of day three starting out at Beaver Lake. Uh, Cody Meyer still has zero fish. Uh, he started the day in the lead, but has fallen a little behind, uh, partly due to that quick start of Jason Reyes right off the bat. Our, our Strike King Pro Cody Meyer has yet to put a fish in the boat. Yeah, it looks like he's a little behind schedule right now compared to where he's been the last couple of days down there. He's looking around down there by the dam. Hopefully he gets on track pretty soon. The deal with fishing these, these incoming water waterfalls is obviously there's a lot of fresh water. It's bringing down nutrients, you know, so bluegill, shad, they're all going to kind of suck to that stuff. And, uh, you know, and the bass are going to be right behind them. You know, my expectations are high for Beaver Lake because, you know, I have a really good track record here. I've done well in the past, and uh, I really need a good tournament to keep my year going to make the Forestwood Cup. I know there's some big ones around here. That's what we need to try to, you know, really do good. Today has been super tough so far, so, you know, we're, uh, we're just in search of a couple good fish and be right back in it. Number one, it's barely. Barely gonna keep, but gotta start somewhere, right? Now over to Brandon McMillan, who's absolutely feared when he puts his boat in the water down in Lake Okeechobee, where he's made the majority of his career earnings on the Big O. 
But now, as a touring pro, he's gonna really have to work on that versatility and consistency on all these different lakes. Yeah, you have to understand, if you're gonna make it out here on the FLW Tour, you're gonna have to be able to figure it out here at Beaver Lake, and uh, looks like he's doing something pretty interesting. The water's off-colored for Beaver Lake, but it's still two, three-foot visibility. So I'm making long flips. You know, they're not real accurate, they're not real real precise, but I mean, I'm trying to get it out there. Sometimes, a lot of times I'll underhand cast it, and then you just kind of drag it off, all, you know, off the bank, all the way back to the boat. And most of my bites are coming in five, six, seven foot of water. Biggin. Ah. Uh. Number five, I'm right about on track. The only thing I'm missing is I've, you know, I've had some better quality largemouth, you know, and I'm missing a big one. And Nick Ganey, another one of our tour veterans in the top five that's looking for his first tour win. Mm -hmm. Got a lot, of, a lot of names here looking for that first victory. Brandon yeah. McMillan, one of the guys that probably has most uh, top 10 finishes. I guess Cody as well has won quite a lot of money, um, but all these guys looking for their first tour win. Come on, fish. You gotta be a hundred fish in this pocket. Thursday and Friday, I didn't catch them till like 10 o'clock. So the first couple hours in the morning are just a grind, and I actually caught one earlier, and I said, that's good, that broke the ice. But the first place I went to, I thought I could catch them, the water muddied up from yesterday. I feel like I'm butting my head against the wall or something. It could get bit, and finally I figured out the water had changed colors, and it had gotten muddier, or muddy, and so I abandoned that, and they just started running new water. What a fish, I don't think he'll keep. I don't think he will. We'll see. Oh, come on, get lit. He's gonna be close. Close. 15. 15. Two. All right. Let's keep getting them. Two down, three to go. Ain't much, but I'm proud of him. The fish now have so many places to go, but the one thing that, like this area right here, the, the bait is here. So as long as the bait's here, the fish are gonna stay and, and feed because it seems to be more of a post-spawn deal than an actual spawning tournament. When we got here, I thought, okay, it's gonna be a uh, for sure, spawning tournament, sight fishing is gonna play, but it didn't really play out that way. And then the water came up and anybody that had found some fish on beds, that, that was pretty much over with. I actually started flipping. I got here, I flipped a lot. I threw a wacky worm. I mixed it up with a uh, floating worm, a shaky head, and shaky head has been the best thing I've had going the last couple days. I think sometimes you, you get the fish in a shaky head way too fast, and you get to really, really slow it down, like crawl it, barely bump it. Uh, a lot of guys want to, you know, hop it too much, and that tends to, you know, be too fast sometimes for the fish. There we go. All right. I gotta get rid of somebody. I believe so. There you go. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Jason Reyes pretty much now in the driver's seat from the way I see it. He is calm, cool, collected, and ready to go. But Johnny McCombs has made the jump up the leaderboard as this Saturday shuffle is underway. Don't go anywhere. It's the FLW Tour from Beaver Lake. Spot a bass keeper. It's something better than a sharp stick in the eye. This crankbait will catch uh, some spots over here. Oh yeah, that feels good. I'd say we're getting close to 10 pounds now. Welcome back, everyone. Here on Beaver Lake for the fifth stop on the 2017 FLW Tour, presented by General Tire. We look at our unofficial leaderboard. This is where you want to be at the end of the day here, because we're only going to move forward uh, 10 anglers of our top 20 into the fourth and final day tomorrow. 
And what Johnny uh, McCombs may have found is the fish that have moved up is because they're chasing those shad. That bass will do whatever it needs to do for that easy meal. And that, that may be what the key is, that if Jason ends up locating an area where those fish have been moved up because of that shad spawn, he might be able to connect with that four to five pounder that he really needs to, uh, to lead day three going into day four. Yesterday, I spent a lot of time just trying to finish off a limit. So it's a pretty good feeling to just be sitting here looking for quality fish rather than filling a limit. He had mentioned to me a place he had where the boulders, when he got there, in, you know, during practice, were you could see them. Big, you know, those big, giant beaver lake boulders that stick out off the bank. And he said, they are now completely submerged. But he said, what's crazy is I got the bite, you know, from practice, fishing right at the edge of those boulders to yesterday the bites came from the same place. This morning we got two or three hours of you know, nice weather and took advantage of that, got a limit real fast. And then after that we, you know, we just kept grinding, 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 cold one here, cold one there. So that was fortunate. He's gotta be stoked about this. I mean, this, is just, this is literally what he's just trying to do, is keep upgrading, keep upgrading. He's doing uh, what we talked about earlier, the mixed species and the two species to have is uh, okay. small mouth and large mouth. Nice, yeah. nice smallie. All right, that helps a little bit. Now give me a four pound large amount. Today, it just got progressively worse. I mean, you know, today is awful. It's been popping lightning and pouring rain all day. I mean, that lightning will get you. By 12 o'clock, I'm, I'm in that panic mode about what am I gonna do now? Because I don't have a limit. Earlier this morning, I lost one that, that probably picked me up three or four places. A two and a half pound fish here will jump you up five places. Today I knew, you know, th this morning was nice. I, I knew that I had a small opportunity to catch these fish, a small window, uh, especially with these storms rolling in. You know, I started off on my best spot, uh, you know, down by the dam in the mouth of a pocket, and the fish were just not there. I saw a few on the graph, had no bites there, and I was really relying on that spot to do well in this tournament. You know, after that, I just kind of scrapped everything. I ran around, I, I, I looked for new water, I fished some incoming water, uh, fished some debris pockets, but just, very few fish, and the fish I caught were really small. Hey, what do you know? Number five, baby. I got him in the net. <laughs> Cody's staying positive right there. That's going to be the key to him. He's been around this uh, this position before. Started the day in first. If he just gets a limit, makes day four, he's still going to be in this, and he can still reconnect with those fish. I didn't have a good practice at all. I uh, pretty much all I did, um, I, I tried to find as many you know fish on beds as I could, and I just went back to the areas that had a few fish on beds. Once the water rose, I just went back there and kind of settled down, and I just flipped everything that was in front of me, um, whether it was wood or docks or rocks or you know anything that I could visually see, um, you know, and you just drag that jig out off the bank to where like the water was, you know, the day before. And that's uh, that's pretty much the way that I that I did it. That's a big one. Yes. That's what I needed right there. Look at how I had her hooked under the jaw. There. I never in my life seen something like that. You are the defending champion of this event. Scott Canterbury, the 11 pounds and 10 ounces, your reigning Forest Wood Cup champion. John Cox, 12 pounds and one ounce. He led day one, he led day two. Cody Meyer, 613 still has you in third place. Today was just one of those days my grandpa said it best years ago. He said that's why they call it fishing, not catching. From Huffman, Texas, Jason Reyes, 
11 pounds, three ounces. I got a chance to win on Sunday. That's all you can ask for. A four-time cup qualifier. Five today for Johnny McCombs worth 18 pounds and 15 ounces. You're the new leader. Catch you tomorrow. Another, another day left. Without a doubt, our Evan Rude big mover on day three is Alabama pro Johnny McCombs. Smashing the tournament best limit of almost 19 pounds to claim the number one spot for the final day. The top 10 let out in the morning by Johnny McCombs, who weighed in the heaviest bag of the event, 18 pounds and 15 ounces today. So he sits on top of the leaderboard with 41 pounds, 13 ounces, followed by Jason Reyes in second and Cody Myers in third. Thanks everyone for coming out. I really have nothing left. I have nothing to, to, to go to that I feel confident about that you know I can catch a big fish. So it's just gonna be a lot of new water, random stuff. Gonna go down the bank, uh, look for stuff. If I see something that looks good, I'm definitely gonna fish it. And the game plan's to start on an area we've been catching a limit in the morning. Uh, hopefully this high water hasn't affected that too much, but uh, we're gonna try it, see what happens. After that, it's gonna be a day of just adapting to the conditions. Go out there and try to catch them today, man. The water's come up a lot, it's gonna be different. Let's go out there and get after, man. That's all I know to do. It's the final day, and our anglers are geared up and ready to go. Once again, I'm Travis Moran alongside Rob Newell, and we're bringing you all the action from the fourth day on the FLW Tour here at Beaver Lake, brought to you by General Tires. And the big story here on Beaver Lake, Johnny McCombs. Yes, sir, we got us a two horse race, more or less. Johnny McCombs and Jason Reyes. They're four or five pounds ahead of the rest of the field. I'm gonna say it's between these two guys. Johnny McCombs here yesterday showed us what he's got in the tank. 19 pounds, I thought it was a shad spawn, it's not. He's fishing front, like front lawns, yards, anywhere the water covers like grass or any kind of bank. But Jason Reyes has him a hot spot too. One little place that's producing fish really, really fast. Let's see if he can get it done this morning. Now, Rob, if I'm hearing you right, it really seems like this is coming down to a two-man race. And we're about to find out here real quick because the action starts now. We gotta go get them, baby. We gotta go get them. A little island that we were flipping around yesterday is completely submerged now. Could be spread out a little more. They just got about three foot of water on top of them overnight. I still think they're gonna use this saddle though. It's kind of a saddle between two little islands there. And uh, this is an old shoreline pattern. All week these guys have talked about two things, newly flooded cover, old shoreline. Reyes has a better shot at catching mixed species. He's right there kind of in the mouth of Prairie Creek on an island, and you right there you got spotted bass. He's catching some smallmouth, largemouth. <laughs> yep, yep. There's one. Nice way to start the day for Reyes right there. All right, first one. That sun comes up, it could favor uh, Cox right here, and that's, uh, he is uh, notorious for being able to find these bed fish. And not only find the bed fish, but really be able to read those spawning fish that want to come up and understand right. the moods that these fish are in, and being able to actually catch those fish, which can be an extremely hard thing to do. If it warms up at all, or he at least can see the fish, he might be able to uh, make some, some huge uh, catches and, and really move up the leaderboard. You could see the bottom in like 10 feet here the other day. But there was big ones in here. They would chase my Cinco out and they just wouldn't eat it. You know, they're like four pounders. Yeah, that's why I was like, well, maybe I come here and fish and catch one. This area where I went day two and I had a lot of follows. I would throw my Cinco out and I would see these fish come off the bank and, and they were good. Uh, they were paired up. They were getting ready to spawn, but they weren't quite ready. And uh, I could see them day two and I couldn't catch any of them. So today, I, with the water being a little dirtier, I went right back to that same area uh, and I started flipping. No, you didn't. Oh my gosh, he came off. That was a big one. <laughs> that was one of them four pounders. 
right here in these yards, man. That's where it's at. Grass, you can get to the bank in here. All right, baby, let's get a five pounder. Big dog coming. I think this water is full of oxygen. You know, it's coming in, it's pumping in this lake. They like to get in it. I was fishing a buzz bait on a 25 pound seagull line. You know, I just make, make you know, precise cast in these little grass patches on these, uh, in these actually yards, people's yards. So you could get to the bank, and that's, that's where the bigger fish were. He's putting that bait in some unbelievable places. Guys like Andy Morgan and Gerald Swindle say he's the best fisherman they've ever been in the boat with, and he's, you know, he's throwing yeah. top water. Uh, you can see you won't see many rods on Johnny McCombs' yeah, deck today. Know, he is man. dedicated to this, and you see what happened. Yep. Hogola. Johnny McCombs is off to a good start. Oh. Yeah, he's got that buzz bait cooking in those front yards looking for those lawn lunkers. It's gonna be an exciting day. More coverage of the FLW Tour on Beaver Lake presented by General Tire is on its way. Don't go anywhere. I need to calm down, let it flow. That's like a new lake. I mean, whoever figures them out today does it. He's a little bitty one, but he'll measure. Man, I've only had just a couple of short peck pecks on my jig, just flipping it around, so. We are back at Beaver Lake on our fourth and final day. It's been a fun one so far. A little bit slow on, on the actual fish catch. But one guy that you just, we talk about every single event is Brian Thrift because of how much of a consistent angler he is. You don't and, want to stumble with that guy behind you, that's for sure. Yeah, he is. He is the great shadow. He is that guy you will uh, not shake. He lurks. And going into that final day, he's always hanging around those final days. And uh, if you stumble at all, he's not going to let you stumble far before he just runs right in front of you. You cannot discount him in any way. And he just slowly keeps creeping and creeping, and he's just Mr. Consistent. The stuff I'm fishing out here on beavers just pretty much places I've caught them in the past. Like I said, I've been here probably 10 times and I've got a lot of history here. I almost feel like a local. So I've got a lot of places where I've caught a random fish here and there. And it seems like year in and year out, I can always consistently get bit off of those places. So that's pretty much what I did today was just run places where I've caught fish in the past and it worked out. My expectations this morning were really high. You know, I'm in third place, I'm in contention to win, even though I'm, you know, a little ways back, I knew anything could happen. It's Beaver Lake, a couple big bites will go a long ways, but you know, that water, I mean, it just, it kept coming up and uh, it just made the fishing even tougher than before. And just keep trying stuff, keep searching, you know, for new water and uh, just see if we could find something, put together a pattern. I was really thinking, you know, maybe maybe the smallmouth are going to bite again. They didn't on day three, but maybe today is the day they're going to bite, uh, you know, and I can get healthy really quick. There's one. Uh, I don't think it's a keeper. It was just a weird day, a weird feel. You know, some of these points that I've fished for so many years, you know, coming here every single year, I didn't even recognize the areas or the spots because the water was so high. Barely. I mean, it's a, it's a line burner. Definitely a tough one. It's a different lake right now than I think any of us top 10 anglers have seen in the past. Now here's our second place angler going into the final day, and that's a Jason Reyes. We, we've talked in depth uh, about that point that he's been fishing that keeps filling up, and but it's still got fish on it. A little bit more offshore fishing that old shoreline. That's the key for him. When we showed up this morning, I noticed the water was even more up than it was in practice or in the tournament. It came up, I guess, three or four feet last night an island that I was fishing and it completely submerged. Like there wasn't even any bushes left in visible sight. So it was definitely a challenge. Even yesterday, some of the stuff he was fishing, you could kind of see little bits of the, you know, bushes and stuff sticking up on the outside. Now it's completely buried. It was about a two and a half pound smallie. So you talk about that mix. He's got a spotted bass first thing in the morning and now that smallie. And so uh, that definitely playing a key into the Reyes' patterns there. Every other angler out here today is wondering, is McCombs just slaughtering him right now? That's, he's, he's definitely making these other guys fish a little faster, and definitely um, you know, festering in the back of their minds. I'm getting the bites, man, if I can just catch them. For those of you who've never heard of Johnny McCombs before, he's, uh, this is not a new game for him. He's a guy that's been around for a long time, had a FLW tour on the Pascagoula 1 at one point and uh, had the fish in his live well. 
to, uh, to win the tournament, hands down, and uh, was late for check-in and got disqualified, and he's been around. He grew up fishing with uh, guys like Andy Morgan and Gerald Swindle, and Andy said, by far, the most naturally talented fisherman I've ever been in the boat with. Now, that's saying something coming from Andy. Both of those guys, Andy Morgan and Gerald Swindle, will, will tell you this guy's nothing but a natural talent. I mean, it, it's amazing. That's a spot. It's a big spot. I'll take him, baby. I'll take him, baby. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence, Lowrance. GoPro, this is your life. Be a hero. The world leader in off road innovation, Polaris Off Road Vehicles. Yeti, built for the wild. And by TH Marine from transom to trolling motor. My GPS is showing us that we're on land. The water's up so much, it's showing we're not even in the water. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we're right out in front of Prairie Creek. Never too late. Plenty of time. Oh, come on, baby. Don't be a carp. Come on. What those fish are doing. Oh my god, I had her. It wasn't a carp. Sure, I can get a bite right here, man. Deep right against the bank. Perfect. God. Big fish right there. I learned to fish. I might win some money. God, I miss him. We are back. Travis Moran here, Rob Newell, at our uh, fifth event of the 2017 FLW Tour here on Beaver Lake. It really looks like everyone's patterns have totally changed, and every one of these 10 anglers is trying to figure out new things our leader McCombs. Um, definitely a buzz bait bite going on, but we've seen those misses. It looks like some of the issue with that buzz bait is there's so much debris in the water that clogs his blade. Definitely have seen at least two missed opportunities for him. Been hard on me so far to keep missing them. Not taking a bait is good, but still should have called him. Ain't got no excuse. It's fishing pole we gotta do better. I, I still think he's being really hard on himself. Those kind of strikes, there are just things that happen in this game that y you've done everything you possibly can. And they just get it funny. They get it at a time right when you're kind of snatching it to clear the blade and it, e the timing's just not right. I don't deserve to win this tournament the way I fished today. All week long, I didn't miss no fish. I caught everyone to bit. I didn't lose none today, man. It just. It just didn't happen, man. You know, he hasn't been fishing the tour since 2003, and that was did back to when he actually got DQ'd from the tournament for coming in late. And it wasn't that he was late. He, he literally just misjudged the time. He thought he was on time, and he just had the wrong time down, and that really led to some events. I said, would a win here help redemption from 17 years ago? He said, this is not about that kind of redemption for me anymore. He said, after that Pascagoula tournament, I had some serious issues with substance abuse. He said there were days that he woke up and didn't even know why he was alive anymore. He has since gotten himself cleaned up. He's 12 months sober now. He's back out fishing again. And he told me if I was to win this tournament and I could get one person that was where I was at the bottom of the barrel to see that I got through that, cleaned myself up, and was able to win a national bass tournament, if I could get one, if I could inspire one person to change their life through that, that's what this win would mean to me. God, oh, there's a big fish here, I feel it. God, I miss that fish, man. I think what the irony here could be was, uh, I, I remember when McCombs got the DQ at the Pascagoula River. Tommy Biffle, I believe, ended up winning that tournament with just two bass. If things remain like this, Imagine if Johnny McCombs wins this tournament today with just two bass. There'd be some irony right there. These fish are hard to find, man. I gotta do something. 
We just made a run down towards the dam. The water's a lot clearer, and I feel like less affected by all the high water. I'm throwing a shaky head, and I'm sitting in like 17 feet of water, throwing up on some you know, shallow rock and docks and things like that. It's a good smallmouth. All right, got number three. This has just been the theme. You can see these anglers having to readjust and not. You can often learn the most about anglers when they're pushed. That's what this has really been. And to see these anglers try to connect these dots and see what happens uh, for the end of this. This week's been good. Um, you know, hit another top 10 on Beaver, can't complain. Uh, one of these times, the weather's gonna get right and uh, we're gonna get one of them done here. I can feel it, you know, it sets up real good. So we'll, uh, you know, <laughs> we'll just see how it goes and wait till next time. When you're in a position to win, uh, you really, you know, wanna take advantage of that. And I mean, I don't know what they caught today, but I don't feel like that I, you know, produced enough fish, but you know, hopefully I'll place high. I had a good week. I, I fished clean all week. I didn't lose anything that cost me uh, to speak of, at least that I've seen. So I'm happy with that. I've been nearly a year clean now, man. I'm just, I'm just happy to be out here and happy to be alive. Lucky to be alive. All I want to know is to fish next year, man. You know, if I win, that's fine. But I just, I'm, I'm not a greedy person. I just, I just want to know to fish next year. That's all I want. And this brutal day of fishing is finally coming to an end. And honestly, Rob, some of these anglers may be ready for it just to be over. Yeah, I'm going to call Beaver Lake the bucking bronco today because there were just too many changes, too fast, and these anglers just couldn't adjust and keep up with what Beaver Lake dealt them today. And we're going to find out our final results as we head over to the weigh-in and throw it to Chris Jones. All right, Rogers, Arkansas. You guys ready to do this? 37 pounds and 8 ounces of Beaver Lake bass, 34 pounds and 5 ounces, a 5 bass limit for Keith Bryan. He is the number one angler in the world. A 5 bass limit, 10 pounds and 1 ounce, you got the lead. He is the defending champion of this event. Number three is a good one. Bryan's like, yeah, it's not good. I think he's pretty safe. That's it for me today. There you go, three for Scott Canterbury. This number one. That's all she wrote. <laughs> one of those days for Brandon McMillan. Two spots, nice catch. That's all I got, it was rough today. That'll go three pounds and four ounces, John. It was just rough and, uh, you know, I was thinking how did I catch those fish the last three days here, but, uh, you know, it's just fortunate that, uh, you know, this is the last day of the tournament and we're here on the top 10. Wow, and Cody Meyer. Number three, <laughs> a line burner, five pounds and four ounces. I know that didn't scare Brian Thrift, but I did my best. You know, I'm out there, had fun, just a, a great tournament. I can't complain, I'm in the top 10. In three days, Jason Reyes has amassed 39 pounds and nine ounces of Beaver Lake bass. There's number one, nice smallmouth. Number two, solid spotted bass. Number three. So you got three good ones in there, man. That's the problem. That's all I got is three. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. He's got three bass. That'll go. Five pounds and two ounces. You got the lead, Jason Reyes. In three days, he's amassed 41 pounds and 13 ounces of Beaver Lake bass. That was good enough to lead going into the final day of competition. How many fish do you have in that bag? Two. Two. This is going to be fun. Here we go, Johnny McCombs of Morris, Alabama. Let's see your two best bass. There's number one. There's number two. You need it, two pounds and 14 ounces. Johnny McCombs, two today, worth. Five pounds, four ounces. Your champion is Johnny McCombs. 47 pounds and one ounce of Beaver Lake Bass. He is your champion. 100.
$100,000 richer. You are officially an FLW Tour champion. Two fish, you know, I, I had uh, two pockets I could have blew this thing out in, man. I probably should have had 14 or 16 pounds out of them. I just, I just couldn't hook them up, man. I guess I was too jacked up, missing them, jerking too fast. I don't know. Worked out anyways. Yeah, did. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama's Johnny McCombs. He knocks down the title on Championship Sunday.